I go. Amen. Amen. I go. Amen. Amen. All right. So we are here, and um, there's Asin Manso again. Um, our guide here is called Roland. Uh, Roland is going to be um, our guide and explain the whole place to us and then take us to the Nonkonsu, which is famously called here, Nonkonsu, which means Slave River. All right, Roland. All right, okay. Brother Roland, uh, just give us a, one, of your, one of your many uh, African names and we'll go by that okay. one. Uh, so you welcome to the central region of Ghana, at St. Manso Slave Market to be precise. My name is Kofi because I'm a Friday male born. Kofi. Uh, Roland is my slave name. Yes, I'm a Friday male born and I'm going to be your tour guide. Uh, but before we start with the tour, let's observe a minute of silence for all our enslaved brothers and sisters who lost their lives during the trade. After which I will say may their soul rest in perfect peace and you all respond by saying, Ashe. Ashe. So please, can we observe a minute of silence for our ancestors? Thank you very much. May the souls of our ancestors rest in perfect peace. Amen. So I guess you've been coming from the States, right? You know your story. Yes, you know your story. You know our history. So my job has been made so, 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 so easy. Now, during the 15th and the 16th century thereafter, as we all know, our brothers and sisters were hunted. They were captured and they were treated as merchandise. We were shipped across the Atlantic Ocean to work on plantations in the Caribbeans and the Americas. As St. Mansu you see today was the greatest proof for the adoption of individuals, family, friends, relatives across the Atlantic Ocean to work on plantations. It was the biggest slave market during the transatlantic slave trade era, as documented by one British historian known as W.E. Ward in his book entitled The Short History of Ghana. Although there were some slave markets like the Piccolo slave market at the, at the Upper East region of Ghana, Salaga markets at the northern part of Ghana, Ketekashi slave markets and other slave markets as well, Asen Manso slave markets here in the central region of Ghana, and the Salaga markets at the northern part of Ghana played a major role during the transatlantic slave trade. And slave Africans were captured from Ghana and countries that share border with Ghana at the north. That is Burkina Faso, Mali, and some parts of Nigeria. And they were made to march in chains and shackles, barefooted and half naked to the Salaga markets at the north. It was in the Salaga markets that we had our first rest period. We were given just a few, a, a few breaks to relax. And after that, we were again made to march in chains and shackles, barefooted and half naked, to Asin Mansu slave market here, which was 300 miles from the Salaga market. During that era, because we were marching through the forest belt of our country, a lot of our ancestors were exposed to many dangers while marching them from the north to the central part of Ghana. Some of them were beaten by snakes, others were attacked by wild animals, others suffered punishment and brutality from the slave raiders. Research has it that 40% of our brothers and sisters while marching them from the north to Asin Mansu here lost their lives. Mm. One of their biggest challenges was at Chifopraso crossing the Pra River. So when you're coming from Kumasi, there's this huge river that separates Kumasi and this community called the Pra River. It is one of our greatest challenge for crossing that river. Basically, it was the survivor and the fittest. Only the strongest survived. So those of our brothers and sisters who were weak and couldn't continue with the journey, they were dumped in the river to die. Now, in 2004, the government of Ghana and that of Netherlands embarked on the project called the Slave Route Project. All that we wanted to identify was the path that our enslaved Africans were made to use while marching them from the north to the central part of Ghana. And one of the places that was identified was the Mole National Park. The Mole National Park is one of our wildlife reserves that we have at the northern part of Ghana, which boasts of all wild animals you could think of, the, the, the lions, the leopard, the, 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 every animal you could think of, we have some that. So, so currently, if you go to the Mole National Park, you are going to see those animals. So imagine our brothers and sisters walking through that thick forest with all these animals. That is why I said earlier that most of us were attacked by these animals. Now, when we were coming through the bushes, because the animals were feeding on us, the raiders have a way of pushing the animals back 
so that they don't attack us and them. And do you know what they did? What is first? Yes, when they are walking and they found out that two or three or four of our brothers and sisters were weak and couldn't concern with the journey, we were brought out of our chains, we were tied around any big tree they find in the forest, oh. left behind to perish. So, when the animals are also looking for something to feed on, they come into contact with our helpless ancestors and they feed on us. So they use us as bait to negotiate their way through the forest. So when they landed here at Asin Manso, this was a place that we were sorted out according to age and gender. Men separated from the boys, women, children, etc. And in determining our ages, a device called the speculum oris is put into, the, into our mouth, open our mouth, count our teeth, thereby focusing our ages. After which we were, we were made to take our last bath here before being sold to the merchant. As if that is not enough, after selling us, we were again made to walk in chains and shackles, barefooted and half naked, to the Cape Coast and Elimina Castle, which is 31 miles and 35 miles from here, respectively, because that was where the slave ship was being docked. Now, during that era, wherever we were captured, it was a match of no return. We're going from our roots and we're never coming back. So when we go through the dungeons of the castles, there is this door with the inscription, the door of no return. This door of no return is not there to serve the purpose of we Africans. It is there to serve the purpose of those people, not we Africans. Because they thought with the door of no return, we are never going to come back to tell the story as it is. They thought all the atrocities that they committed on us were not going to come back to tell the story as it is. They thought our culture and traditions as Africans would be cleaned forever. Basically, they wanted to clean all the African race in their setting. But now, we are conscious enough to know where we are coming from. We are conscious to know our motivators and our ancestors. We come to our roots as when as we love to return. So, we need to change that writings, that perception, on the walls of the Cape Coast Castle, from the door of no return to the door that, the door of no return that fits them, to the door of return which fits us. Because yes. now I have my brothers and sisters yes. coming back to their roots. Yes, 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 yes. But the big question is, then, how do we change that writings on the walls of the Cape Coast Castle, from the door of no return to the door of return? Mm. That's the second time question been asked like, yeah. like that. That is why, as you can see, in our ancestral graveyard, we have the mortal remains of our two great ancestors, Madame Krista and Samuel Kazi, may their soul rest in perfect peace. Ashe. 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 Madame Krista was part of the Maroons who was captured and landed up in Jamaica as enslaved African. But because she was a mother, she couldn't stand the pain, the atrocities, the more treatments that was meted on one another. Mm -hmm. She couldn't see children crying for help. She couldn't see people calling for death to come their way. Mm -hmm. Because now most of us were scared to die. But during that era, we were calling for it to come to our, our aid. But even death was so scared of what was being perpetrated on us. So this lady, in her own way, she decided to starve herself to death. But during that era, because we were classified as an asset to the, reader, to the merchant, we were forced to feed. So by doing so, they chisel your teeth and they force you to feed. These are some of the punishments Madame Krista have to endure. But yes, so she stood on the ground and said, no, I'm not going to take in anything until she lost her life. We have Summer Cousin at the fire and the first African-American to rise to the highest rank in the US Navy. He died at the age of 35 years, but he wasn't given a defeated barrier because he's from the African descent. Most of them call we Africans brute. They say we are sub subhumans. They say we are not intelligent. And they use all sorts of words to, to qualify us. But research has also proven otherwise. That we Africans are the ones with the highest of IQ. Yeah. So I always tell my people, let's just ignore them. We shouldn't go to their limit for them to defeat us because we know our world as Africans. Yes, brother, yes. yes. Now, so, their ministry, so the mortal remains of Madam Krista and Samuel Cousin was flown in from Jamaica and US respectively to the Kotoka International Airport in collaboration with their families and our Ministry of Tourism. Mm -hmm. Then by boat to the Atlantic Ocean, to the Cape Coast Castle, oh. coming out from the door of oh. low return, oh. 
changing it to the door of return on the 31st day of July 1998. Yes. 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 Because it is assumed that all our brothers and sisters made their way through that door to the Caribbean and Americas. But years. none ever have returned through that same door to their roots. So with our mother, Asheim. Madam Krista and Samuel Cousin returning from that same door to their roots, just to usher our brothers and sisters in the diaspora that yeah. yes, it is now safe to come to your roots. It is now safe to come to your country because this is where you belong. Yes. Asheim. So the same day on the 31st of July, these two of our great ancestors, Madam Krista and Samuel Cousin landed here at Asin Manso. Asin is an Akan word, which means Yes, same travelers, people that are just passing through. So research has it that 60% of people that from this community were some of our enslaved Africans who managed to escape. Mm. But because they didn't know how to return to where they were captured, they formed part of this community. Mm. So, so when these two of our ancestors landed here, we already had a connection, we already had a chemistry with them. It was, it, was, uh, it, was a wonderful, it was a wonderful day. Everybody in this community were made to wear black. We had vigil for our ancestors. We mourn our ancestors. And the following day, which was, which was the first of August, these two of our great ancestors, Madam Krista and Samuel Cousin, were buried here. So every first of August is when Ghana, as a nation, we decided to celebrate our emancipation festival. Sometimes my brothers from the diaspora always ask me, Kofi, what, 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 is your, what do you understand by the word emancipation? I always tell them I always have my own way because everything that I say should come from my heart. I always tell them it's the day that Africans from the diaspora and Africans everywhere, we come together to take stock from where we started as Africans, from where we are now as Africans, and where we want to be tomorrow as Africans. So together in one accord, we all strategize on how to make ourselves better and stronger again. Now, as you can see, we have portraits of freedom fighters, human rights activists, most of them are coming from your head. There is one thing that we, we observe. We thought most of our brothers from the diaspora feel this disconnection between you and I. There's this disconnection that you feel is happening, but it's not happening because these people are there to just brainwash us. All the ancestors that fought for you, for the abolishment of slavery, for the promotion of human rights, we see them as our ancestors. And whenever we are praying, whenever we are pouring libation, we acknowledge their names. So it is prudent and right to acknowledge these great ancestors on our ancestral roots. Yes. So that is why we have all these portraits to show this. Now, I'm going to take you to one beautiful plant uh, that saved a lot of our enslaved Africans. If it wasn't because of that beautiful plant, like most of us would also be captured as captives. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you some indigenous knowledge about that plant and I, will, uh, and I will illustrate how it saved a lot of our lives. So if you wouldn't mind, can we please go to that beautiful plant that saved a lot of our Absolutely. lives? Thank yes. you very much. Dum, dum. That's Prime Minister's one ancestor, Samuel Carson. Another one. 